You hear the tick? It's still missing a cylinder. You see how much it wobbles? Okay, try turning it back on. Yeah. Stop! 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 Turn it off! Turn it off! To all you gearheads, what is wrong with this engine? You put your comment down below at the beginning of this video and I'll have the answer to you at the end of this video. I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization, see you later. Twenty-eight countries later, and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. We've been stuck away from our boat for over a year, and although we'd left her in pretty good shape, things have deteriorated in our absence. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Some of it's undamaged, other things have simply ceased from not being used. Wow. After weeks and weeks of work, we finally launched her last week. And although she's watertight from below, we're still working through some issues. Since we don't have engines yet, we're going to get towed over by the dinghy. This is all in preparation to cross one of the more remote stretches of water, namely the Indian Ocean. There will be no spare parts or technicians until we make landfall in the Seychelles or Africa. We will have to be self-sufficient, including making our own electricity, fresh water, and having engines that are reliable to cross areas of no wind. To increase the stakes, we will be doing this passage with our one-year-old. Okay, here we go. So what do you guys think? Is it bad fuel? Maybe a stock valve? compression, low battery. There's another one, bad filter. So first step, um, the fuel line to the fuel tank is plugged. And as I say that, I wonder if I turned off the shut off at the fuel tank. Don't tell me that. Oh my God. I am such an idiot. Oh my god, how stupid am I? Oh my god. I wasted a whole <coughs> night on this. Why did I even turn that off? Obviously, the engine doesn't have fuel if the fuel shut off is turned off at the tank. I am such an idiot. He called himself not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> How do I look here? This probably doesn't look very good. Uh, I'm cutting your ass out of it, so. That's a good idea. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Nothing yet. Uh, yeah, try again. <laughs> sounds like it's missing a. Uh, sounds like it's missing a cylinder. You see how much it wobbles? Listen to it. Listen. You hear the tick? It's like a stuck valve or something. It's like a tick, 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 tick. Yeah, we got a stuck valve, I think. Or a stuck lifter. Okay, try turning it back on. Stop! 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 Turn it off! Turn it off! That didn't... I might actually need a mechanic. <sighs> Alright, so we've got a bigger problem than I thought we did. One cylinder, second cylinder, third cylinder. And that might not be the right order, I'm not exactly sure. 
But then, so you got three sets of valves. You got an intake and out, and in and out, and in and an out. Each one of these is either responsible for getting air in or for letting the exhaust gases back out. And then on the other side, you have what's called a push rod. You got a push rod there, a valve there. And then you got a push rod there. You might have already spotted the problem and a valve there. And then you got a noodle there and a valve there. This is way outside of my scope. I do not know how to replace a push rod. Um, I don't even know how to open the fuel tank shut off. Well, I know how to close it, apparently. But this is going to have to call in a mechanic. The beauty of a catamaran is that you have two of almost everything. Two rudders, two engines, two hulls. <laughs> My question is, and Ashley's question is, what did we do wrong? Should we have done something before we started this engine? Should we have stopped it when we heard the ticking? What actually happened is we were revving it. And we heard the ticking. We were revving it a little bit. The ticking went away. And then all of a sudden it went. Ka -pa 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 so maybe we did something wrong. We should have shut it down earlier. We don't know. We're not experts. We're just a couple sailors. We are attempting to leave the dock, attempting. We only have one engine, port, and the wind is also coming from port, pushing us onto the dock. So we're gonna try and swivel the butt out by having a spring line, and then we're gonna back out. Okay, let go. yelling by the crew and <laughs> this little girl did amazing she just sat there actually left her <laughs> I left her sitting there I totally didn't realize when we were about to hit that she was still sitting there and she remained sitting there she's oh like gosh. what's all that yelling about mom dude we, we hit the other boat we didn't hit it well we would have if that captain hadn't been on board it would have been tragic <gasps> <laughs> After a year and a half, this was the first outing beyond the confines of a marina. We got Willa down here. Trying her best not to get in the bath. And we're almost at an island. A few days late for Willa's first birthday, but nonetheless at anchor, ready to celebrate. Ready to iron out more issues before we can set sail offshore. Baby steps. First swim off the boat. What are you thinking? Bulwark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you feel? You feel like you need to swim? I'm thinking I need to check the props, the through holes, the rudders. This is not a luxury swim. Nor is it a luxury tour then. Enjoy. I'm coming in right after it's you. It's a moldy snorkel though. <laughs> moldy snorkel. <laughs> The prop tape holds, even though we put it on like way less time before we should have. <laughs> what a recommendation, all these instructions here. <laughs> anyway, I'm pretty stoked. It's Willa's first birthday today and cupcakes are done. And it worked, even in 30 degree heat. The icing turned out really good, even though it's with crazy margarine. They're all vegan because Will is totally allergic to milk and gets crazy hives all over. I think she's gonna really like this. Happy birthday, dear Willa. Happy birthday to you. 
Okay, gotta blow it out now. What's this? Fire! Blow it out. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, you do it. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> That's something really cool. Whoa. Ow. Down to bed. Oh my gosh, there's something. We haven't finished this room by any means, but the biggest thing that we've done in this room is set up a leaf cloth for her bed. So it basically makes a giant crib for her. She quite enjoys it. Nighty night. We had to be a little creative because Ben still has to get on the engines on this side because the engines are under the bed in Nahoa. Nighty night. It feels so good to be at anchor, to be floating around on the hook, as they say when you're cruising. This is the life that we strive for and we've finally done it. We're still limping along. We only have one engine, obviously. We only have one fridge. It's chocker block full. The reason for it is because we usually have a top loader up here, which is wor uh, normally working, not working right now. Um, but I've been actually told to move out of the fridge. And what that means is move your beer out of the fridge. So I'm still drinking warm beer. So I've talked to the mechanics about the engine. Uh, they've said that this is a common problem when an engine sits for a long time, that the valve gets stuck. The valve is on one side, you got a rocker arm, you got a push rod on the other side, the two work together. Uh, the valve likely did not hit the piston coming up, just simply the push rod came up and bent. So that said, we still will be pulling the entire top of that engine off We'll be doing a full service on that engine. Raw water pump is gonna get serviced, the fresh water pump, the exhaust elbow, the valve seats, the valve guides, all of that's coming off. Our new water maker is gonna get attached to the engine. And so that engine needs to be performing in top shape so that we have fresh water for our little family. Actually, and both engines do. The other engine is the one that's got our, our uh, fancy alternator on it. Yeah. We only have one fancy alternator, and then the other engine's gonna be our water source. There's a lot to do still. There's a lot to do still. Nothing's been prettified. There's a lot of stuff kind of haphazardly tossed in places. Things are not put away. But uh, we're but yeah. out here. Yeah, we're doing it. It, it feels good. <laughs> we're floating, the water's staying out, and the people are staying on board for the most part. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy a couple sunsets, swinging on the hook. Yep. A couple warm beers. <laughs> He's been sneaking them in the freezer just so everyone knows. <laughs> we do have the separate freezer and it does work and so the beers have been sliding in there. <laughs> Sometimes they're a bit slushy. <laughs> yep. You gotta time it man. You gotta put them in at noon and by 6 p.m. They're usually like, nice and cold. Very cold. <laughs> but I can fit two, maybe three sometimes, so. Well, yeah. After the third, your taste buds are kind of numb anyway, so it's warm beers, okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. We'll be back next week with, well, more boat work. And uh, <laughs> we welcome you to join us then. I'm sure there will be more drama. It'll be interesting to dock this boat after we're at anchor now. See ya. See Bye. you later. There's just gonna be more demands for our time, so we're gonna do more preventative maintenance to not free up, but to mitigate any more lost time. In I the think future. it's sort of a, you do this preventative maintenance for peace of mind. It's like then you you know you've done it and you've eliminated that possibility of that failure.